Okay. So good morning, everybody. Thank you, Kimberly, for that kind introduction. I am really honored and delighted to be here. It is my one-year anniversary with Crystal Cruises today. I couldn't think of a better team to spend my anniversary with than all of you. So I'm delighted to be here. And I really welcome any questions, so feel free to ask me whatever you like. And if you don't want to ask anything publicly, just catch me aside at the end. And I have plenty of cards that have my cell phone and email on it, so make sure you grab one of those before you leave. So, hello. Terrific. Um, happy you can join us at the Welcome on the Okay. Okay. Sit down. So, <laughs> one year with Crystal. But I think not everybody may not know you as well as I know you. So we'd love a little bit of background sure. about sort of your amazing career that you had. And Absolutely. Wow. Well, thank you. It's a great question and a great start. So I've been doing this now approaching 33 years. No, I didn't start when I was two. And I took, I guess, my great parents' advice, which was get a great education, follow you, find your passion, and follow it. And my passion was travel. I wanted to travel the world in a luxurious manner as from a young girl. I thought, well, how am I going to fund that? So I thought, I'll become a travel consultant. So the genesis of my career was as each of you, 30-something years ago, as a travel consultant right here in my hometown of New York for Liberty Travel, and worked my way up, and the rest is history. So from the travel agency world and management of travel agencies, I then went to work for what was then System One, which morphed into Amadeus, and I ran for 12 years their most profitable division, which was their global cruise division. I had 90% market share, so all the cruise lines were my customers, and I looked at it as a partnership for life. They were predatory DOT, DOJ con uh, contracts, and I didn't just want to keep renewing them every five years. I wanted them to be ecstatic and be my client slash partner for life, and I and that's what occurred. And even the one or two lines that weren't my client, in the pursuit of converting them, they became my friends. So in that endeavor, in that 12-year ten tenure, it allowed me on a macro level to understand the cruise industry, but then on a micro level to understand each individual brand, what their brand idiosyncrasies were, and what their business objectives were, and how they tried to develop technology to help them. And then all the presidents who were my customers, who were the ones who signed the contracts, used to ask me to come to work for them. And I would say, no thank you. It's like being the mother of ten kids. I love you all differently, and I'll keep your secrets. But then one day I got a phone call from uh, Larry Pimitel, who was at Cunard at the time, and I was an Anglophile since I was 12. So he said, how would you like to come and be part of the executive management team to roll out Queen Mary 2? And so how could I say no at that point? And that was very iconic 15 years ago in the development for that brand. And that was where what led me from the vendor side to the cruise line side. And I was there in several different executive capacities for both Cunard and Seaborn concurrently. So I certainly loved luxury, understood it. And this was how I was funding my passion, travel the world in a luxurious <laughs> manner. So uh, from there, Carnival Corp obviously owned that. I did a lot of different special projects for the other brands. And when they were acquired by Princess and were moving Cunard at the time in Miami to LA, I had known Peter Radcliffe very well because he was the one customer I didn't have in the end of my Amadeus tenure. I did have a piece of their business. And he said, Edie, whatever you want, come move to Valencia and do this. And I said, Peter, thank you, I appreciate it. But at that time, my now 24-year-old son was you know, a preteen, and I was divorced since he was five, and I promised him I would never move. So I said, I'm not moving. I'm a New York girl via Florida, now in L.A. And I said, until my son is 18 and away at college, I'm not moving unless I have to, and I don't have to, so thank you. So that's when Bob Dickinson called and said, well, come to Carnival. I was jealous that Larry did that, come to Carnival. So I hopped over, not my favorite space. It was not the Carnival of today. It was what they did. They delivered what they promised mass market type, down market brand, but nonetheless, under Bob's regime, ran a profitable, good company. And I loved my tenure there and with that team. That team changed, the new management team, that wasn't what I signed up for. So Larry called me again and I went across town to Royal to Asamara Club Cruises, their upmarket brand, where I was for four years until Crystal called, and I've been here now a year. So very long-winded way. I know you're saying, does that New Yorker take breath? No, I do. Okay. Well, I'm not so sure. I hope I answered your I'm question. I'm not sure you're qualified enough. I'm a little daunted by your expertise. Wow, where'd it go from there? Um, so why don't we talk about Crystal a little bit? Mm -hmm. 
obviously you came in a year yes. ago. Um, you have a vision, you have an idea of where you want to take it. Yeah. Um, we're fortunate enough that we know your two ships very well, but uh, there's always hope will there be a third ship or yes. more. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing over the past year. Great. Well, uh, obviously when I went there, first of all, it was a 24-year-old brand. Next July we're celebrating our 25th anniversary. And it was a stellar brand. I call it the Rolls Royce of the cruise industry. It is the creme de la creme. No other brand in the world, not only the cruise space, any space, not even Singapore Airlines, who's won almost as close, but 20 years Condé Nast World's Best. Next, next month, next week, 21st year comes out, and I'm praying we win 21 years. And also 19 out of 19 years travel and leisure. So now living in LA, I have to use Hollywood analogies. And I say, that's like being a star and winning the Golden Globe and the Oscar for 20 years in a row. It just doesn't happen, but we did that. And kudos to the team, because the brand was great before I got there, and I did not come in like a bull in a china shop to change the world. I thought, it's a fantastic brand, I'll evaluate, and we will just tweak and evolve, because as a luxury consumer evolves, and they do, we need to evolve this brand and take it forward. So we've done a lot of things in the last year, everything from implementing in our refresh a taste restaurant on board Serenity, to now having site running shore excursions, to late riser excursions, to a myriad of things that a luxury consumer, I always say, they evolve probably more than the average consumer. So we want to offer options. They, there are reasons that our phones and our iPads are called iPhone, iPad. We want what we want, when we want it, and the flavor we want it. So for a luxury guest, that's exacerbated even further. So the more options that we can offer, the better, a happier client, your clients that you entrust to become our guests, we are able to do. So we make these little tweaks along the way. But clearly, as I said to my chairman when they tried to hire me, I'm not coming there if we're just going to stay a two-ship operation. We have to grow it. There's such power in this 24-year-old brand equity that we will be remiss as a company for profit to not grow it. So as I said when I came, my vision is to really grow the brand. And there are a bunch of different ways we can grow it. But obviously, it starts with ships, whether it's a new ship or we buy a ship. It's additional ships, so we can offer even more incredible itineraries around the world. So we are on that trajectory. There's nothing I can say publicly now, but I think your common sense, anybody's common sense would tell you, when you have this kind of brand, with this kind of brand equity in the luxury space, and these kind of awards that are second to none, you, you, you have to grow. So it's not a question of if. It's a question of when, and I wish I could tell you that right now. I can't, she but will. I say Eventually. By, the end, by the end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. So, would have loved to have been in that interview with you while you were interviewing for the job <laughs> with who your owners are, pitching what your vision is. Um, so, you know, clearly there is so much there. Where do you sort of put yourself with your comp set so we can sort of understand? Obviously, you have the accolades. You are two ships. It, they tend to be on the larger side, obviously luxury. But who do you really think your demographic and your comp set is? Okay, well that's a great question. So I now speak from an experienced luxury consumer, a travel consultant like each of you, and just a lover of cruising. When I say that I have been on every brand, I mean I have experienced every brand. I think you can be the greatest salesperson in the world, and I was that number one salesperson at Liberty, and in my whole career I'm very sales driven and goal driven. I was always the number one salesperson, so I have a great deal of respect. Losing's not an option. It's in not. Case we've exactly. So I have a great deal of respect what each and every one of you do every day with those very challenging clients. So in this process, I just, you know, it, it's. It's just a very, very interesting process, is what I will say. But sales is key, and we want to offer as much as possible as we can. So, in any event, back to your original question. When so, your comp set, when you, who right. do you really play it, and then the demographics of okay. okay. who's the typical crystal customer? Right. Well, I think that that's evolved. So when I go back to, in all of those 10 years, I sailed on every brand. I mean, I sailed on Hurt and Gruden, I call it Hurt and Gruden, up to the northern lights in the dead of winter, Le Ponant, 
all of them. I was a, a seaborne executive. I went to Antarctica on Silver Sea. I've been on Region a million times, climbed the Great Wall of China with my son and Mark Conroy, you know, on a Region cruise. So when I say I understand all of what's out there in the cruise space, I really understand it. For our brand, we are clearly luxury. And so in my mind, the cruise competition in the luxury space are three other brands, Seaborne, Region, and Silver Sea, clearly. But we are competing for dollars. So that means your luxury client and the woman who typically makes the buying decision, if her wealthy husband put her on a budget, she has to decide, do I want this $15,000 Birkin Hermes bag, or do I want to go on a vacation, or if the sky's the limit. So our competition in the cruise world is clearly those three brands. But now there are new competitors. So whether it's a shopping spree in Paris that we're competing with, or an almond resort in Asia, or a riverboat. The riverboat segment has grown so incredibly. So they're a new competitor, if you will. And like all of us, you, you choose different vacations for different times in your life. So if I'm going on a romantic getaway with my husband, I might choo choose X. If I'm taking my son and his girlfriend or a big family reunion cruise, I might choose another brand. So we not only have competition in the travel space, but we have disposable income travel spending, like are they getting the Lexus for the holiday present, or are they going to go on a cruise? So in a true competitive set competition, I view those three brands that I mentioned. Now what are the differences? If we've all sailed, I think you can give your story about the differences. One of the key differences, we are obviously larger. I think we offer more enrichment than any other brand out there. We have the highest guest to space ratio. And if your clients like suites or above, that is the suite, pun intended, spa. Book them in a suite or above. But I get six weeks vacation a year and I go on, on Crystal. I'm going to New Zealand next month for my personal vacation. So I believe and I'm passionate in it. Now, in addition to the competition, the other part of your question was, what's the demographic? This has become an evolving demographic. As I said earlier, the luxury consumer evolves, but the demographics evolve as well. So if you've sold Crystal for a number of years, you know going back, we used to have longer night cruises and formal. We, have, we now have from five nights to 108 nights on a world cruise. We no longer have formal required. We had black tie optional. Now we just evolved to more casual, if you will, where they want to wear their $500 jeans with a blazer. Well, if that's accepted in Capri and Ibiza, why shouldn't it be accepted on Crystal? And that's not to say that the more traditional guest that wants to be in black tie or an evening gown or a black cocktail dress won't feel comfortable because that's what the world is today. If you go out to a top restaurant here or a club, that's what's out there. So we continue to evolve that way. But our demographic as a result of these changes has lowered. So if you were to ask me to your question, what's the average age right now? It's 45 years old. I was on, before I accepted the job, I sailed on a secret sailing. And I went on, my passport's in my maiden name, nobody knew who I was, and I sailed. It was a 30-year-old couple from Montreal on that cruise from Canada on their honeymoon. And I said, why did you choose this as your honeymoon? You know, it's interesting. So don't get caught up in the paradigm. And in our minds, sometimes we're our own worst enemies, that if you're living from a few years ago and you say, oh, when I think of Brand X or Crystal as 65 plus and only for older couples, not at all today. Our world crews, we have a couple, the Steiners, they were probably in their 40s. They're entrepreneurs, as long as they have an internet connection, they can go away for 108 days, and they do every year. So it's definitely an evolving luxury consumer. <laughs> So it's different. I want those diners. I know. I know. No relation to the concession for the spa, by the way. And the other thing is it's more eclectic international palette as well. I think the genesis of Crystal was like 90% Americans or North Americans. Now we're about 55% U.S. and Canada. And then this eclectic international mix in descending order of... Uh, the UK, Australia, the Japanese, we get a, a large Japanese clientele because of our Japanese heritage and ownership, and we do have a Japanese translator on board for those groups to make them feel comfortable, and then it's really Germany, the Nordics, and everywhere else. 
We have people from Malaysia, from Israel. When I look at the guest list of passports, it's very different. I mean, it's those top six that I mentioned, but then it's a smattering of everywhere else. And I have to share an interesting story with you because I am so pro-travel agent, not only because it was the beginning of my career, but because a luxury cruise experience is not like an airline seat where I can go on AA.com and book myself point A to point B. I'm a big proponent of what you do, and I encourage it every step along the way. And so much so that 94% of our bookings come from travel consultants. And I want to keep it that way. I would be delighted if 100% came. So last July when I hosted the President's Cruise, every night I ate dinner with different people. And typically from the CP, our most expensive accommodation, and or who has cruised with us the most. So that I had a combination of the two. So one night I'm at dinner, and of course I have the little dossier on everybody before dinner, and I try to have really engaging table conversations. But I was so curious. This couple one night to my left, I would say they were about my age, you know, 53-ish, 26 and a half for the second time. And they were from <laughs> Israel. And I said to them, I see you're from Israel. I see you're in our Crystal Penthouse. I see you did not book through a travel agent. And I see that you've never cruised on Crystal before. May I ask you, what brought you here then? If you didn't go through a travel consultant, why are you here? And you know, this was the first time in my now almost 33 year career I ever heard this. He said verbatim, well, my wife wanted to go to St. Petersburg on a cruise, so I simply Googled, what's the most expensive accommodation? And it was Crystal, so I booked you. He was actually looking for the most expensive. I was like, I can't believe this guy didn't go through a travel agent. Exactly. I had never heard that comment ever. So I said, really? So he said, it was your CP, and this was the itinerary. And that's why we booked it. And I said, well, why didn't you go through a travel agent? And he said, well, I was on the internet doing it, so I just had, you know, the internet do the booking for me. I said, okay. But I, f I found that fascinating, and that goes to how the consumer is evolving. He wasn't a 30-year-old kid that you would presume, like, my 24-year-old son does everything on the internet. They don't even know how to make eye contact out of a conversation. <laughs> I don't get it. They break up with each other via text message, but to each their own. But this was not that demographic. This was somebody my contemporary, my age, and that's how they did it. So it, they are evolving. And if you're not social media savvy and you don't have your own Facebook page to solicit business, you should, because it's definitely a means. So an evolving demographic, getting younger, getting more international, wanting a more casual environment, and spend, spend, spend. You know, our Northwest Passage, if I can just share that a minute, that sailing uh, is unbelievable to me, and here's why. As you may be aware, 32 nights, two years out, we opened it on August 1st for only Crystal Society, our past guest members. We sold out in three days, $35 million roughly in revenue. Sold out in three days. On September 1, when we opened it up to the world, we have such a wait list. I just want to ask each of you to just take a guess as of last Friday, what the wait list is for that sailing. And mind you, this is non-refundable deposits if you get cleared. And anybody who has been cleared, it's a non-refundable deposit for now 22 months away, but 24 months away when we started. Just take a guess. 1,500. No, I wish. But I would have guessed, if I was in the audience being asked that question, my guess from a cerebral and a marketing standpoint would have been maybe 400, what do I know? 678. And you know how many of those are new to Crystal? I wish I could clear them all. I wish I had another ship just so they could all sample Crystal for the first time. So that goes back to an so evolving so demographic. <laughs> So Good interviewer. She's asking the question every which way, but what did I say? <laughs> so you talked a little bit about trends here. Obviously, we've identified that the consumer is changing. You've adapted your product a little bit. When you think out five years, where do you think Crystal's going to be and the luxury cruise cruisers going to be? Well, I certainly hope that for Crystal, we have at least five years from now. It would be my hope that we would have three new ships and maybe some brand differentiation, who knows, dabbling further in the expedition realm, the river realm, who knows, the world's our oyster, because again, it goes back to a great brand with brand equity to have brand extension. So, but for sure, my hope would be, and I, I would envision, at least three new ships, and keeping our two existing, and maybe retrofitting those where we have single seating dining, 
Who knows? But they would still be in play because ships' lives are 35 years now if you spend a lot to refresh. I'll give you an example. Another two ship <laughs> operations spends about $6 million every five years to refresh. We at Crystal spend $120 million every two years to refresh. So quite a difference. And I just came off of Serenity, and I have to tell you, I walk on the, that ship, and I just came from dry dock in Hamburg on Symphony a few weeks ago, and I am amazed at how incredible those ships look. And a testament to that is the fact that, respectfully, the other three luxury brands, some of whom have all new tonnage, they don't win Condé Nast and Travel and Leisure. We keep winning it. So I think unlike a building here in New York, the plaza, that's vintage. They get to be 100 years old. They become vintage, iconic, beautiful. It's not like that in the shipping world. And unfortunately, a cruise ship, even when it's old, when it's new, it's old. I use Royal Caribbean respectfully as an example. They have that incredible uh, allure and oasis for a family brand experience, if that's what you're into. Quantum now. now you have Quantum. So they're, they're just a couple of years old, and now they're old. So that's just the nature of the beast. So I'm really more about, you know what, Emirates. Air, I use as an example, if you've seen that first class suite on Emirates Air, incredible, spectacular, bigger than my old New York apartment when I was living here. But I have to tell you, if those flight attendants and the service and the, if the crew isn't a fantastic captain keeping you safe and the crew servicing you don't smile and provide wonderful service, it doesn't matter that you're in the Taj Mahal of airlines, you're going to be miserable and you're not going to give it as high ratings. So I say it's a testament to our crew. The hardware is important, that's why we invest in refreshing. But new is new in the cruise industry only for a year anyway, so as nice as it would be to have new, it's not going to be new for very long, so how do we continue with that incredible service and those moments of truth face-to-face, -face, our crew with the guests, your clients, that really embody why we win those awards? So tell us a little bit about, because I'm getting a sense of everybody talks about the staff at Crystal. I mean, that's what really makes the difference. What's part of the Crystal training or what the process that you go through to find the crew that you do yeah. or get them where they're so warm? I mean, there's nothing like the Crystal crew that truly, there's a warmth, a genuine warmth there. So what do you, what's your secret sauce to that? Well, I would attribute that, I'm going to quote um, from Thomas Maslam, our Executive Vice President, who's really been with Crystal from day one and worked his way up, because that was my question to him when I started here. And his answer then, and, and it is true, he says, we at Crystal hire for the individual. We look for that kind of personality, for that kind of warmth, and then we train them on the service. Versus finding somebody with this great CV and service, and they worked at every great place that is known for service. But if they're not sweet, and they don't have that personality and that internal desire to want to constantly do the best of the best, go that extra mile. And so that's what it is. He's hiring first with the personalities that are willing, and then training them on the service. And, and an example of that would be a guest just told me the story, and I had read it in their letter. They were at the pool on one of our ships, and she had a very, very expensive diamond ring, wedding ring. And she took it off in her sunbathing and oil with the sunscreen and everything, and she left it on the count, you know, the little side table out by the lounge chair. And then when she was done sunbathing, she just got up and left and went to her room. That cabana person, the lovely Filipino crew, family members I like to call them, he saw she was leaving, so he was just doing his job to make sure he'd refresh it, put new towels, and as he was cleaning, tidying up that area, he sees her big rock. He actually beat her to her stateroom to return it to her before she got back to her stateroom. She didn't even know it was missing, and we ladies would know. We'd have a heart attack. We thought we missed our diamond, and then went back, and it wasn't there. And she does. He she, gets, like, <laughs> she didn't even know she was missing it. He meets her in her stateroom, and he tells her, I, "You know, I'm sorry you left this by the pool." And she, she, she was so unbelievably awed that she wrote me a letter and she told the hotel director, and we, we awarded him and complimented him and all those right things you do. But it is about hiring for the right morals, ethics, willingness and then we can train on the rest. Terrific. Any questions? Did you guys have? 
I would make a comment that Crystal is one of the companies that really support their agents. And I know go backwards to help their agents. And I personally am still writing to some of the members that work on the cruise line. I asked me for my email address, so we still correspond. So they are the wonderful crew. Well, and you have my personal commitment as the team leader for this great brand to continue that. I, as I said, I'm very pro travel agent, and I will give each of you my card. And when you have a situation, I can't, I won't make promises I can't keep. But I absolutely, if you're in a situation, I'm happy to help. And if it's something we can do, we will. And if it's something we can't, we'll explain to you why we can't. But my whole team recognizes how supportive we all need to be. Because I look at you guys as ones who pay our salaries. This is not a brand that you can really sell so easily. That Israeli example was the anomaly. And without each of you and 94% of our bookings coming through you guys, we couldn't do it. So I thank each of you and thank you for your comment. Yes? I had a question. Because we're talking about changing demographics and we have families that are traveling with children, mm -hmm. I just had a situation where I was trying to book for next year interconnecting because that is what a lot of family members want, not sure. necessarily adjacent. And there's and I couldn't get it, but there seemed to be quite a few not so many to be had on, on the ships and I don't know what could be done in the well new new built I hope they're gonna have state more. rooms, right? Huh? Inter interconnecting. Right. That I mean if you have smaller children you want yeah. interconnecting. Right. You know it's Teenage yes. kids, most people feel comfortable that could be adjacent. Sure. But it, it just seemed that interconnecting would be the one right. suggestion we, that I would have. As you say, you have people that are 45 that have small children right. and one interconnecting. Sure. Well, your point is well taken. Today, our current configuration doesn't have a lot of those. Yeah. It's certainly something we can consider on our next refresh. And certainly, in a new build, your point is very well taken. You also don't have enough handicap cabins because the boat's so small. I know. No place it's, to put them. It's well. Yeah, and then, then take away. Yes. You got the cabin space. We are fully ADA compliant though, so whatever we are required to in that genre by law, we do do, and we have that. But another consideration certainly for when we build new. Great. Other questions? It's uh, so it be. So they're always uh, challenging, you know, people who love the much smaller ship. Mm -hmm. It's very crystal, all that, so huge to be. Are you planning to make a little smaller? <laughs> Small. <laughs> well, so, so roughly, let's say, 900 guests on one, 1,000 on the other, but then we have single staterooms. So sometimes we are sold out stateroom-wise, but we only have 700 guests because we have a lot of singles. And again, I go back to the space to guest ratio. We have so much space that you don't feel, I don't feel personally, like I'm on a ship with 700, 900 guests. I really don't. And I've sailed at some really full times. But I get it. And I would say, you know, it's the physical plant is the physical plant. So currently, they should try it and see what they think versus just knocking it out thinking, oh, it's too big. Because it is a different experience. You know, uh, some mass markets have similar size ships. This is a completely different experience. But certainly, when we build new, ideally, I would like to see it in about the 750 guest range. And, and the same size, just again, even bigger guest to space ratio. So assuming that we can make the sales pitch of explaining the benefits of a larger ship, mm -hmm. um, one of the pushbacks still is dining. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Will yeah. any concession be made if you really don't want to do early or late, but want the flexibility to dine when you want? Well, we actually have that program now. You, you know, you right. sign up for it and you tell them what you want. And that's another little challenge, because we would love to be single seated even dining. It's a challenge because of the size of the dining room. So now, as you know, we have the two seatings, but they can pick their dine around and, and say, I don't want to eat at that time. I want by reservation 7.30 or whatever. And we do our best to and accommodate that's not a booking. them. Yeah, and you can do it at booking or when you embark. Oh, you can do it on the show. You okay. can ask, and certainly the maitre d' will do everything in his power to accommodate, definitely. Yes? I have a question about small groups. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain types of excursions that I'm, I plan like wellness that themed mm -hmm. themed groups. 
And it's not always so easy to book everyone at one go. They book into an experience, but over a period of time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and one of the issues that I've had is um, reserving a certain category of state rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there any way that you could become a little more flexible to hold, say, even five state rooms, so 10 to 12 people, not even a really large group. I would love to say it was 30 state rooms, but I'm sure I can work on that. Uh, but even, say, six, six state rooms, a group of 12 people coming on a video routine, or a themed wellness cruise with one leader, one two, So we're standing good. Yeah. Um, Wendy, Wendy picks the sailings that are always the ones that are sellouts. I know. I, well, what can I say? <laughs> the seven jayers. Well, they're good, and, and they're, you know, at a time when people can go. That's but, a tough one. But it, it is an issue that's on my mind because right. I know I can make these things happen. It's just not so easy to sure. do that when all, say, especially the lower category right. kids, um, stay with And some crews only have um, loosened their restriction yeah. on length of a group right. grace period to try and book into it. Mm -hmm. Just wondering. So. Well, I will say this. I will go back and speak to Barb, our VP of Reservations, and see what she has to say, and then we can circle back. Kathy can chat with me with her about it, and we'll see. Again, I don't want to make promises I can't no, keep, I, but I'm glad. I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. It's an issue that I've had, Definitely. And it's something I'm trying to work with. Sure. Since we're on the group Tenacious. subject, mm -hmm. I told Pete I wanted to bring something up. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I really want to, to emphasize with Crystal is that um, you don't, your client can be deposited and still ask for a group contract with us, which I know I understand with some other cruise lines that once they're deposited, you can't ask for a group. So feel free. We have a really nice group policy. In fact, we just went to a really easy um, policy, especially for all of you who are, most of you are independent. So now we have with our groups where you can have a, um, a a shipboard credit for them, and the shipboard credit can either be directly applied to their booking, or prior to we would actually pay. Um, no, I'm sorry. After they sail, as a as a, we would pay you the shipboard credit amount. So if you were going to set up something for them um, as a special, um, you know, transfer, or yeah, or something, or something like that, we would pay it to you. But but what I really want to let you know because I know that. You know, some crews like, it doesn't make sense. Like, you have one client, you know, the Smiths say, oh, I'm going to go. And then they go, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you want to join me? And Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. whatever, join me. And now we've got three couples, and that's all you need for a group. And then the cruise line says, oh, sorry, you're deposited. Now you can't have a group contract, oh. you know, which I know some of the cruise lines show. You can with Crystal. So we're real Great. flexible. I just want you to know that. So And just call Thank me. You. And, Thank you, Kathy. And I will follow up on that and we will get back to you. The other thing I want to say and remind each of you, like you guys, we are very proud to be partners with Virtuoso. And so kudos to Val and being honored again this year. And we were delighted to win back Best Luxury Cruise Line as voted by all of you Virtuoso travel advisors. So thank you for any of you who uh, voted for us. But we do have Voyager Club sailings on every single, every single Crystal Cruise sailing. So I don't know anybody else who has that, but take advantage of that. Take advantage of those virtuoso partnerships that we do with uh, different offerings and two-week sales and things of that nature because it's, an, it's a big investment for us and we want you to take advantage of it. I have a question. Is, who hasn't sailed on Crystal in this room? Why not? You have to come and cruise with us. You could be the greatest salesperson in the world. You're going to sell very differently once you experience it. So I encourage you. We get great agent And rates. how many have never even seen it? Oh, God, you have to. Joy's really. coming Friday. I have a group. Like you come and drive. Something to consider as we get yeah. you know, more Definitely. You really, really have to because it is something special. And as I said, when I went on that secret sailing, contemplating accepting this position, again, because I'm such a passionate person, the irony in all that, having sailed on everyone, 
here's the irony, back to my Amadeus days, Crystal was the only cruise line I didn't have and I never sailed on them. Isn't that ironic? True story. So when I sailed on them, I swear, my husband and I weren't on board 24 hours before we said, oh my God, what was I, an idiot? I have to accept this position, you know? It it's fantastic. But, but I mean, I was that enthralled. I kind of came on as a pessimist. I was like looking for reasons to say, what makes them so great? Why do they keep winning all these awards? Well, less than 24 hours, I got it. So if you haven't cruised, please cruise with us. And certainly, if you haven't sold us, please sell us. <laughs> and sell more of us. And the Japanese food is we? wonderful. No boo. Try to go downtown and eat there. $200 a head. Not on Crystal. Yes? I, I did a cruise on Crystal, and I was by myself. And it just, I was so at home. Because, uh, the staff was wonderful. Yeah. And it just walked around as though I was in my own home. Right. And the uh, passengers were friendly. It's no. great. And you know what we do to, to that? Because I was single for a number of years, and I'd go anywhere by myself because I'm fine. I can make the wall talk, so I would find people to talk to wherever I go. But to that point, we do something, I don't know if you're aware, called Table for Eight. It's fantastic. And what it is is for any single travelers on the ship, if they that night want to eat with other people and they don't want to feel like, oh, I'm sitting with other couples or families, it's eight single people that are traveling alone and opt in. They say, okay, I'll sit at that table for eight tonight. And you meet seven other single people in a very unintrusive kind of way. So if you want to do that, we do everything we can to help singles. In fact, we're the only cruise line the way we've had for years gentlemen hosts, gentlemen to yeah. dance with mm -hmm. single ladies. We now have lady hosts. They only dance, nothing more, not allowed. <laughs> but we have ladies to dance with single men because we have single men cruising too. So Can I mention something? Please, that we didn't talk please. too much about the families and the children. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people get this idea, oh, you're a luxury cruise line, you don't want kids, da da and I think we are the most child friendly of all the luxury cruise lines. So we definitely are family friendly. We have two locations on the ship. One's called Waves, one's called Fantasia. And in the summer, starting about in June through the middle of August, we actually have junior counselors on board the ship. So on the sea days, they have programs that break the kids up into different age groups. And then they do all kinds of different, whether it's stars and crafts, cookie baking team, pool parties at night. We have special, a program called Family Memories, which we have special, um, either kids sell free with them, ship for credits, or even if you have a couple sailing alone with a third birth child, you can always come to me. We can get them a very special reduced rate. And we do have a bunch of sailings with kids sell free and third birth. So the idea is to let you know, you know, we get between 150 to 200 children on board during the summer months. You know, so a lot of people are shocked that we have so many children, but it, it, we are a very family-friendly cruise line, so don't just think, I mean, yeah, if your kid wants a rock climbing wall or the slides, but, you know, a lot of these children who are from more upscale families are more sophisticated kids, you know, and they like going on the higher-end cruise line. You know, I will not name the travel agent, but he works at another virtual so agent. He told me how his kids but with another group of kids, and they were comparing, oh, what's your favorite hotel? Well, well, mine's Raffles. <laughs> and they're like five. <laughs> and I see men are And you know, and he's like, Kat, what are they going to aspire to when they get older? You know, so these kids are used to being on luxury ships anyway, or luxury that's true. properties. But that's so. where it goes back to the guest to space ratio, because you would never know. I sailed mm -hmm. on one of those summer sailings where there were over 100 kids. And I raised my son. I'm done. I love kids, but I want on vacation not see them. And I didn't see them, honestly. They, they really keep, you know, they keep them busy and sort of out of sight. And you don't know. It's not like being on a mass market brand and you're in the elevator and you're the only adult in that elevator with kids. So I think we do a great job of sort of navigating that and making it nice for everybody. And the other thing we just added when I was on Symphony and just came out of Dry Dock, we have pure staterooms. If you're not familiar with our hypoallergenic staterooms, first ever at sea, we already had them on Serenity and now we have them on Symphony as well. So if you have any clients that are into that or have that need, they're fantastic. 
Any last questions? I can't thank you enough. This was wonderful. Um, thank you all. Thank you all. I mean it sincerely. It is about a partnership, and we value and appreciate the partnership with Virtuoso and certainly with Valerie Wilson Travels. So whatever my team and I can do to help you close more crystal sales, we're here to do so.